Hello everyone, I am Genius and welcome to the second video of our channel. So today I will like to discuss about Albert Einstein's most revolutionary theory that is the theory of relativity. I will like to divide this video into two parts. The first part of the video will deal about the special theory of relativity while the other one will deal about general theory of relativity. I know there are a bunch of videos right there on YouTube but I'm gonna explain you this theory in a way that no one has ever done before. I will firstly talk about the core concepts of the theory that will surely fascinate you. Then I would move on to explain its significance and its use. And the third part of this video would be about the scientific history of this theory and also the controversies surrounding it. So I would like to request you to stick till the end of the video. I really hope that you like this video and also I request you to please subscribe my channel. So let's explore. Firstly, let's get on the same track. Some of you already have an in-depth knowledge about it while the others are trying to learn from scratch. The first basic question that will arise in the mind of beginners is what is the meaning of relativity? Relativity was derived from the word relative which means with respect to something. So in this way, theory of relativity is based upon two postulates. The first postulate is the laws of physics are invariant in all inertial systems which means that if two objects are in rest with respect to something then they both experience the laws of physics or working mechanism of a physical phenomenon in the same way. The second postulate simply implies that the speed of light in a vacuum is same for all observers regardless of the motion of light source. I hope this statement is quite easy and you can understand it well enough. Now let's talk about rest and motion. Albert Einstein, while working in his theory, realized nothing in this world is at absolute rest or motion. Everything in this universe is at rest and motion simultaneously at the same time, which is dependent upon the initial frame of reference. Let us take an example. Two men are sitting on a moving train. Now let us consider a third person standing outside and watching the people on the train. Now if the first two men look at each other, they can easily say that they are at rest while the one outside can simply state that they are in a state of motion. Now, who's correct? Actually, both of them. Why is it so? It is simply because a person with respect to the other one in the train is at rest as the initial frame of reference is actually moving at the same rate as the person in the train. Here, initial frame of reference denotes the person in the train while in the next case, the initial frame of reference is outside the train and not moving along with it. That is, third person observing the people inside the train. I hope you can get a simpler idea about this topic, though I have tried to explain you using the technical term. So later on, you can actually have some ideas when you try to achieve an in-depth knowledge of this theory. So due to this tricky idea, you can consider that there is no absolute frame of reference and even a tree standing still might seem as it rests although it is also in a state of uniform motion. It's because the earth is moving, the sun is moving and also the solar system and the entire galaxy moves on its axis. So till now we have finally concluded that the laws of physics are simplest in inertial frame of reference that is static or having uniform motion or simply non-accelerating. Now, I would like to discuss more about the speed of light. The speed of light is 299792458 meter per second, which is considered to be the universal speed limit. Nothing in this universe having certain positive mass can travel faster than the speed of light. As you already have known, the mass of an object increases as it reaches closer to the speed of light. But how the hell can the mass be generated out of nothing? To explain it, we can simply take an assumption. To speed up something, we need to provide certain energy to that object. Now let us consider this the speed of light is very fast. So tremendous amount of energy is required to accelerate closer to the cosmic speed limit. But generally as we know, object can't achieve the speed of light. But what would happen if an object speeds up to 99.999% of the speed of light and again more amount of energy is provided to it. We know that our universe is like a closed system, that is, no energy or mass is ever lost. 
so what happens to that added energy it simply adds up to its mass now you have got an idea of how the body increases its mass when it travels closer to the speed of light but as you know even if you can travel at certain percent of the speed of light you gain some mass that is the relativistic effects are observed so actually while you accelerate to a higher speed limits more energy is actually wasted as it adds up to your mass while increases just a bit of your speed this topic actually brings us to our next topic that is the formula of mass energy equivalence it is the most famous equation and you probably have guessed it right the equation is e equals mc square where e m and c stands for energy mass and the speed of light respectively c is used for the speed of light because c denotes celeritas a latin word which means swiftness the accelerating bodies moving very fast experience relativistic effects like time dilation length contraction etc now let us switch gears and talk about time dilation time is not absolute and it is also relative that is it depends upon the frame of reference or a point in space time there are two types of time dilation the first one is gravitational time dilation time begins to slow down for an individual who tends to be in a region having strong gravitational pull this simply means that clocks in the region having strong gravitational pull tends to pass more slowly than the ones far away from such regions the second one is velocity time dilation if an object moves at a very high velocity closer to the speed of light it experiences time dilation it means that the faster you move through space the slower you move into time it simply can be explained by a very easy formula that is speed equals distance traveled by time taken now when an object is in motion it covers a greater distance than the one who is stationary now as the second postulate of special relativity implies that the speed of light is constant so if the speed in both conditions that is the rest and motion are equal therefore as the distance increases the time passing by also increases here i didn't mean to say that the time passes faster or the number of seconds get increased instead for an observer who is in motion the time passage will be quite slower so one second will comparatively pass sooner for the person at rest and thus their clocks would tick at a different rate now we can find these differences using mathematical form of lorentz transformation the equation representing lorentz transformation is given on your screen from this formula it is easier to calculate time dilation length contraction and also the relativistic mass relativistic mass simply means increase in mass when an object travels very close to the speed of light so now let's present things off now i'm not going to explain a tough topic but i'm going to do a thing that albert einstein really loved that is a thought experiment so you can just hang out and watch how creatively these effects can be utilized in an imaginary form the question here is what's the topic about this experiment the topic of this experiment is what happens when you travel very close to the speed of light equal to the speed of light and also faster than the speed of light so you are spinning very faster then you realize you start feeling paranoid as you experience the relativistic effects in reality you won't experience it but let us think it for a second in an imaginative form time would slow down for you and as you spend 1 second in your spacecraft traveling at 60% of the speed of light here one day in satellite would be equivalent to 30 hours on earth as you speed up to 80% of the speed of light 24 hours in space would seem as 40 hours on earth then everything including you would start to gain mass you would grow heavier and appear to shrink in size due to length contraction but you wouldn't realize these effects because your body would function slower your thought process would decrease at the exact rate as your time slows down since it's an imagination let's consider you reach the speed of light the particles of light that is the photons would never reach you and you would not see anything you would completely become blind 
you will gain an infinite mass and string to the point of singularity in other person's point of view your body would stop to function thought process would collapse ultimately even though let's consider you survived it and travel even further then time would start to rotate backward for you photons of light that reach your eyes will move away from you you will be able to remember all the past events ultimately your aging will be reversed so in the next video we will discuss about the magnificent scientific history of the theory of relativity and also the controversies that were created during it we will also try to get inside the mind of albert einstein to know about his thought process and how he came to propose such a startling theory in addition to this we will also discuss about the scientific experiments done to prove this theory